Welcome to Art Talk. It's where art and artists come together. The show is hosted by our own Floatin' Fred. During each show, he talks to local artists and goes out on the street to visit some of our Valley residents. With Fred, we never really know what's going to happen. Hey, pretty good. <laughs> and here's our host, Floatin' Fred. Hi, welcome to Art Talk. I'm your host, Floatin' Fred. This is a show dedicated to art and the people that make it. It's brought to you, produced by the Valley Arts Council. All right, today's guest on Art Talk is Lane Ann Schwarzenberg. You're a, a polymer clay artist, and I have to admit, polymer clay is an amazing medium. It's, it's not really a mainstream thing, but um, it's so unique, and your work is uh, so unique. It's, it's, it's one of a kind, actually. And you do make one of a kind jewelry, um, bracelets, rings, pendants, and um, what else is there? Oh, bracelets, rings, and pendants. Yep. I do. Um, earrings. Yep. And uh, just seeing some of your work, the polymer clay, it looks so delicate and intricate, which it is, but it's also quite durable, too, which is good to know. Leanne, tell us, um, where are you from? I'm from Trumbull originally and lived in Virginia for a while, and now I'm back here. I live in Ansonia. Ansonia, Connecticut. Yep. That's great. And how long have you been doing the um, polymer? For about 28 years. 28 yep. years. Yep. I found it when I was just 18 years old. Eight. I was in college. A friend came over and brought a sample pack of polymer clay in all different colors. And she left to go home for uh, the summer and she left it with me. And by the time she came back, I was making beads and figurines and all kinds of stuff. And Never gave up on it. She left you all the clay and all the colors. Mm -hmm. And you are a very colorful artist. I mean, you're one of our most colorful <laughs> artists. You're a colorful gal. How do you always look so good? How do you oh, thank you. I know it's like the color splash and the man in black, and right? The, yeah, I try to simplify things. But yeah, well, you know, it's funny. If you caught me a couple of years ago, I was always wearing all black, too. And I lost about 150 pounds. And you lost, I think mm -hmm. I found about 20 pounds. <laughs> I yeah, mean, that's amazing. Yeah, uh, and pounds. and so it was decided to go with color. <laughs> yep, yep, and that's that's the thing is that I changed over from always kind of wanting to be in the shadows to wanting to live out loud and wear wear bright colors and and be a little piece of art walking around. Well, I think you are, and I think your uh, your demeanor and, and your personality is as colorful as your clothing in. Uh, and your Thanks. and your work. Um, let me ask you, Lynn, how did you become an artist? It was really my only choice. Um, I'm not going to say I wasn't good at anything else, but this is what I think I was best at. And I really didn't want to have to have a job. I wanted to be able to just create and sell the things that I create, teach people to do the things that I do. That's one of my main Parts of my uh, Palmer Clay artistry is also becoming somebody who's developing techniques and going around and teaching it. It lets me not only not have to have an adult or real job, but I also I get to travel and make the stuff that I love. And, and that's very important because if you love what you do, it never feels like a job. Yeah. You know? uh, and teaching students, I mean, that's got to be very rewarding too. Uh, it is. I think it ha takes a special student to be drawn toward polymer clay. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will probably say, polymer clay, what's that? Mm -hmm. you know, um, I remember I understood like Play-Doh and <laughs> Silly sure. Putty, but that was about it. But polymer clay, tell us a little bit more about Um, It's actually, if you believe it, it's ground up PVC in a plasticizer with pigment. So it's basically, if if you really, really get down to it, it's like the pipes that we use, the PVC pipes, but it's ground into particles. Like and a powder or a... Uh, well, I will, I'm not really sure the, the um, manufacturing process, but I know that it's PVC mm -hmm. and it's uh, a malleable plastic that we just, we bake it in our home oven. You don't have to have a kiln, mm -hmm. which is really good. Yeah, it makes it accessible to a lot more people because you don't have to have specialized ovens. And then when it's hot, it's more malleable, and you 
Uh, yeah, and you can also break it a lot easier, too. Oh, yeah. But um, when it's, it's not that it's hot and malleable like glass. We use a lot of the glass maker's techniques. Mm. But it's, you, you make whatever you have, and then what we do is we put it in the oven to bake, and then it gets hardened. And at that point, you can sand it, you can cut it, you can paint it if you want to. And uh, the technique that I use most is called millefiori caning. Millefiori caning. Caning. Yeah, it's it's wow. canes of polymer, and each each one of these little roses and leaves on my bracelet here is a slice from a little log that I cut that I've made from the little pictures. Wow! So that's it's, like a slice. Yep. Kind of yep. like when you go to the deli and they slice the. Alone yeah, the, I know. If if I could get one of those things on a that? miniature basis to slice up my canes, that would be pretty good. You know, I've seen your work um, for years now um, at our gallery mm -hmm. uh, and displayed to, for the Valley Arts Council. But I've also read some um, articles that were done on you, and you do this everywhere. I mean, you're kind of like uh, world renowned for polymer clay. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, you're you're like the queen of polymer clay. Well, thank you. Um, I, I really I have been doing it for a long time, and I've had a lot of students. So I was able to actually travel. I think I've taught in about 40 states, five or six countries. Five on or cruises. six countries. Yeah, yeah. So polymer clay is like, it's worldwide. Oh, sure. It's absolutely worldwide. It's beautiful, beautiful work. It's so unique. And as I mentioned earlier in the program, it seems very fragile, but yet it is durable. Yeah, it's durable, especially if you use some of the stronger, more professional brands that um, they bake at a hotter temperature and they get much harder once they've been baked. And you have to, you have to also kind of know how to, uh, to make attachments and stuff, but um, it's not all that fragile once it's been baked long and... Uh, for a long time and really hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really hot. Yep. Uh, now, in the 20 years you've been doing this, have you seen that any of the technologies change? In oh, um, sure. Yeah. When I first started, Tell us about that. when I first started doing clay, we had to roll the clay into sheets with with rolling pins or a glass or something like that. Now we have our own manufactured um, clay rolling machines which were based on pasta machines and pasta so we can machines. yeah yeah that's yeah. something you know something yeah, about isn't bit. it <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we used a pasta machine and now I have a big one that's about it does about 10 inches worth of clay and you roll it through and you can make all kinds of uh, blends and blend mm. the colors together on a much easier basis and how was it done let's say 20 years ago, before, before this technology. It was squeezing it and wow. twisting it by hand and rolling it out with a rolling pin. and So technology yeah. has definitely helped you. Oh, absolutely. That. Absolutely. And do you see it advancing in the future? Or? Oh, sure. Sure. Wow. You can mimic just about any material. The things that you can do with it are really, it's, it's unlimited. It's, it's kind of unbelievable how many things you can mimic. Uh, wood and brick and leather and uh, glass, all different kinds of things. And I was actually going to show you something that um, you may you may know one of our friends who is also a polymer clay artist. And I wanted to show you something that he made. Uh, and we're speaking of Tommy. That's right. Tommy Howell, he does some amazing, amazing stuff. We got to get him on the show. Yeah, um, and I think you will. So that anyway, would be great. That you saw be... me with this box before, yes. right? Well, thought we it was thought. A cake. We thought. What is it? That Fred is needed his very own. Oh my God, Fred! <laughs> Wait a minute, this is blowing my mind. <laughs> this is freaking me out. And this is polymer clay. That is made out of polymer clay. It's on a wood base. Oh my God! We didn't make the guitar, but we, we could have to if get we had the time. On the show here. Well, he's I actually cannot... right. Do I look that good? I wish I looked half that good. <laughs> I've seen some of his work, and even on your work, but his detail, he's more, um, not so much jewelry, but more um, figures. And yep. um, it's really some of the detail and the stuff he's done that I've seen is frightening. Although I've seen some of your Day of the Dead stuff, too. Mm -hmm. And that was quite, um, yeah, I had facial, uh, um, 
faces in there, facial faces. That cool. is. <laughs> yeah, this is this is for you, and it's no. gonna. Oh, absolutely. Are it you crazy? Is he nuts, Tommy? If you're watching, if you was a woman, I'd kiss you. Um, no, no, take that. Yeah. <laughs> that is really. <laughs> I am flattered, and I'm amazed at this. I mean, polymer clay, and uh, I, I mean, I respected the medium, but this is really. Let's let's get a side by side here. <laughs> huh? Huh? With the oh my god! I got the, the teeth. I got the conducting baton. This is uh, um. I don't know what to say on this. <laughs> uh, Tom, it, I owe you a coffee, a bunch of them. You're gonna get a lot of coffee. Hey, that is really cool. Thank you so much. Let me put this over here. So uh, let me ask you. Let's get back to Lillian Schwartzenberg. Do you believe um? Um, fashion. Do you feel that's a, that's an art form? I think it can be. I think I think for me, fashion was an accident, though, in a way, because like I said, I never really wore much in color. I mm. wore all black. I felt like I had a uniform where everything was black or a pair of jeans. I don't have to eat. Yeah, <laughs> and I was actually teaching out in um, Washington State in Seattle, and I bought a jacket, and I paid way too much. Well. It turned out that it was one of the best things that I ever bought. But I, I paid a bunch of money for this rag jacket that was really bright colors, you know, amazing Technicolor dream coat Dreamcoat. kind yeah. of thing. And everywhere I wore it, people gave me compliments. And, and I thought, well, I like this. Why not? Uh, <laughs> and so, compliments are nice. Yeah, so with compliment. a little bit of goodwill and a whole lot of moxie, I decided that I was going to start wearing crazy colors and patterns and everything just so that I could make people smile and, and get some compliments here and there. <laughs> and I think you've succeeded in that. And you do have the moxie. I think that's important. But you do make people smile, too. What 46-year-old dresses like this? <laughs> well, come on, come on. 46? 46. That's only a number. It all depends on what's in your heart. Yeah. That's what, that's what, and rock and roll. Rock and roll will keep you young. Yeah, but that is so, um, wow, that is really cool. And you do make people smile. I think your work makes people smile. And Thank it's you. inspirational. Jewelry um, is an amazing art form to begin with, but the polymer clay, it's just, it, it, it spins a whole new thing into it. It's, because uh, normally people think of gemstone, precious metal, mm -hmm. um, for jewelry, and that is the basis uh, of the whole um Industry, I guess you could mm -hmm. say, but polymer clay in of itself is just a just a beautiful medium, and to be able to wear it and show that it's like you're able to sh walk around with your art and show yeah. your art, wear your art. Um, what do you think it 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 was that started you to make you want to create? You know, I think it's just wanting to have pretty things that didn't necessarily already exist, I and like mm -hmm. and be able to wear them. And um, my parents tell me that flower was my first word, besides, you know, mama flower. and dada, that I said flow. <laughs> and so, no. so I've been obsessed with flowers my whole life. I also, you can see I have a lot of flowers on my body, too. And you are like a walking canvas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I wanted to make um, pretty flowers, and maybe not something that's exactly a copy of what you find in nature. Mm -hmm. But but something akin to what you find in nature. Kind of like um, recreating nature a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Instead of waiting for nature to recreate itself, you're recreating some of it. There you go. Very interesting. Uh, it's beautiful work. Um, I need to ask you, do you have a favorite artist? And if so, who is he or she? I do. It would be clearly for me Salvador Dali. Oh, yes. Surrealism. Sorry. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And it's because his technique is perfect. He's, he's, his skill and technique, he's absolutely perfect. But then he just goes crazy with the imagination, too. So you can look at the paintings and see just uh, amazing things that um, existed in his world and maybe not ours. And Yeah. I'm I'd like to think... His. Too, I'd like um, to think I have something of that going on with my stuff where um, a flower that I make is not something you'd find in your garden, but you recognize it as a flower form. 
Correct. And a lot of his work, too, I think, can be interpreted so, um, so differently. I know a lot of times I'd read his titles, and his titles would um, hit home with me a little. Do you title any of your work? Sometimes. I, I hate doing it. It's, it's one of the things I really don't like to do is put a title on okay. something. But in, when you enter contests, they always want you to title your piece. And so I would title some things. Um, you know, I wouldn't just say, like, pink necklace. <laughs> I, would, well, I would always come up with something a little more. Especially if it was more. orange. That wouldn't, yeah. that wouldn't go over too yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I make a lot of, well, the florals, but then I also do... Um, I also do faux wood, and I made faux a piece, wood. yeah. Tell a, us about that. Um, it looks like marquetry, and, um, or inlay, and I make wood that really, so it's actually fooled some woodworkers where they, but until they picked it up and felt that it wasn't wood, they actually thought that it was from the look of it. And so when I put them together and I, and I make tiles that are with the floral and then the wood on the outside, I would title it like a perfect union or something like that so because I was uniting a couple of techniques so I would try to come up with good titles I just don't always like that part. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more of your um, the Day of the Dead series. Oh yeah that's that's one of my favorite things to do and you can see that's I really on my that. Yeah. there too. Um, with the pendant you did and the earrings. Mm -hmm. um, I started actually with a stone skull and um, and I put the petals and leaves around it, and sometimes what looks like butterfly wings, and um, make little pendants that are like little shrines that you find in the Day of the Dead ceremonies in Mexico. In Mex that's right. And it's become, well, uh, you can't say it's become mainstream, but it's become much more um, understood. Mm -hmm. um, Skulls and Flowers is one of the top hashtags on Instagram. Really? You, yep, hashtag skulls and flowers, and wow. or skulls and roses. Skulls and, and roses. And if you put that into Instagram, you get hundreds of thousands of results. That's probably amazing. millions. That's amazing. You know, and just looking at some of your ink, your tattoo work um, that you had done. Uh, I remember back in the day, it used to be skulls and and. Um, anchors and mm -hmm. roses and flowers. American and, classic. Yeah, yeah it, it's, uh, but now it has evolved into a whole art form itself. Sure, sure. Actually, some of your work would make, this almost blends in. Well, this is like actually one of my, one of my pieces. Wow. I had my, I had my actual piece um, of the flowers and the butterfly tattooed onto my arm. That, it, that's beautiful work. Thank you. Uh, you're a piece of, you're just a piece of artwork yourself. I'm a piece of work. <laughs> just a piece of work in progress. I can't thank you enough for being on the show. Will well, you come back? You. Absolutely. Promise? Sure. Cross your heart, hope to die? Absolutely, you got it. A community is often defined by its access to the arts, by its presence or by its absence. It's, it's very important to have something. The Valley Arts Council represents the seven municipalities that make up the Lower Nogatuck Valley region. It was formed for the purpose of creating and promoting a connecting thread between those among us who are artists and those who have an interest in experiencing the arts. Sometimes the only difference between a life full of art and a life void of art is simply its accessibility. Our mission is to ensure that the contribution that the arts make to one's life is recognized, valued, and realized. Visit our Main Street Gallery in downtown Ansonia, right across from City Hall. Welcome to Art Talk, the show where art and artists come together. I'm your host, Rich DiCarlo. And with me today is artist, sculptor, Basil Rockage. Basil, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you to invite me. It's quite a pleasure to have you on the show today. Um, I, you will hear so much about you. You're a good member, of the, outstanding member of the community and do a lot for us. Uh, tell me, how did you become an artist? What influenced you? What? Uh, to give the answer, actually, is I don't know how I become artist, but all my life is uh, draw, draw with clay, draw with wood, with two sculptures, chisels, you know, with painting, different colors, water colors, oil colors, you know, oil base, and if you work and you have little talent, you know, you. You're going to be something. Little talent, huh? Oh, boy. 
<laughs> that's, an, that's an understatement. But um, you are considered the preeminent sculptor of Mother Teresa, the imagery of Mother Teresa. Um, you got works in the United Nations, the White House, and the Vatican, and also in Sonia. Tell me, tell us, how'd that happen? How did the... Well, has uh, some reasons. First, Mother Teresa is a saint. Mother Teresa is uh, from uh, my old country, Albania. And uh, I dedicate a uh, lot of time to sculpt her in the sculpture. And uh, a lot of sculptures dedicate and do sculpture dedicate her because she is a famous art, famous uh, lady. Yes. You know, she got the Nobel Prize for peace and uh, she worked all her life, you know, with the sick and the poor people and uh, she did the combination, she did the combination very nice, shade and light. Light is um, money from the rich people and shade, you know, combinate the what you need the people, sick people, rich, and uh, poor people. And uh, I dedicated the sculpture from 1997. And I finished the sculpture one month before she died. And uh, the sculpture is celebrated in Montenegro first one, one month after she died. Wow, Montenegro. Yes. And uh, I'm proud to say, you know, I'm first sculpture in the world I made the monument dedicate her. And uh, I, I work all the time in different uh, sizes, different material and uh, different ideas and uh, my son support me to do to, to do sculpture because uh, to be artist you need to spend the time, you need to spend the money. Right. And in 2010 I opened the three show, you know, you helped me to, to prepare in the papers. Right. And for show in, uh, in uh, Kenerike, and uh, for show in uh, Boston, and for show in New York. Wow. In 2010, was the 100 years anniversary, you know, for her birthday. Right. And uh, like this, you know, I work Mother Teresa. And, and uh, when I come here in the United uh, States, I come because uh, the priest and the guys who pay the Mother Teresa and the order for community here in New York uh, make me warranty to come here and to celebrate the sculpture. Fantastic. And uh, when I come here, I saw here is beautiful and my country actually was uh, just to change the democracy and there was trans tran transit, transit uh, yes. system, you know, and was not uh, great for me over there and was in danger, you know, and uh, I decided to stay here. And like this, Mother Teresa changed my life. <laughs> That's good. And yeah. we thank Mother Teresa for uh, bringing it to us. Yeah. One of the most talented uh, sculptors I've ever seen. Yeah. Fantastic work, though. Yeah. Folks will be able to see your major work of yours that's going to be unveiled this April in Ansonia um, at City Hall. Can you tell us more about the uh, statue that's going out in front of uh, City Hall? Well, it was my pleasure and my dream to work sculpture dedicated to Martin Luther King. But I'm not sure we're going to be in this April because it's the snow outside, it's winter, but as soon as possible, you know, it depends on the weather, the sculpture is going to be right in front of the city hall. That would be fantastic. Uh, to be there, thankful for uh, Mayor in Ansonia, Dave Cassetti, and uh, the church, Baptist church here in Ansonia. With it's Macedonia the Baptist Church? Macedonia Baptist Church and Excellent. the great, great priest, great priest and community and a lot of meetings that they get, you know, how to build and how to sculpt and how right. to do, how, you know, but now almost is ready. I was in uh, Vermont to do the base for Martin Luther King. And the base is made out of granite, is it? Or? Yeah, the base is uh, the name uh, granite is absolutely black granite. Wow. So that's going to be a six feet high, eight inch round cylinder with arch on top. And uh, it's very difficult to install, but I hope, you know, it's going to finish good. That's a quite unusual, the arch on a, and a, the arch on any sculpture is a very unusual uh, pedestal. I've never seen that before. 
Yeah, uh, all time, actually, I like in my sculpture to put something new, you know, because uh, everyone is different with each other, and uh, my sculpture is going to be different, uh, you know. It's one hand, but <laughs> to made, but uh, all sculpture is good to be different. Right. Uh, right. That I like to put in my sculpture. The par for Martin Luther King, the base is with arch and sculpture is with arch and the, the both arch bring his idea up to the sky. This is first in sculpture and is new. That is very good for, for bust. Right, and I think Ancionio will be the uh, one of the first uh, cities to have an actual official bust of uh, Martin Luther King on display anywhere and of any, any city in the, um, in the state. That's great. Uh, it, it, I, I saw one bust in uh, in a granite, but really, I'm not gonna say anything because uh, if you see the sculpture, you're gonna you're gonna see sculpture, but no, yeah, it's not. It's yeah, not what you think. Yeah, yes. is a, is it's good not a fossil wreckage piece. Okay. <laughs> somebody did it. You know, I have respect. Of course, anyway, yes. but it's a, it's a lot of work. I, but yeah, uh, I'm it. I'm gonna say. The Martin Luther King bust in Ansonia is first sculpture in bronze. Okay, first cast sculptor. Yeah, first sculptor. sculpture in bronze out, in outside. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, we'd love to ha love having you here, but before you go, I would like to know, and I'm sure everybody else would like to know, who is your favorite artist, living or dead, you know, American, foreign, whatever? You know, who's your inspiration? Uh... It's not easy to say, to 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 say one name, for example. If you go in a, in a New Haven, is a great uh, gallery, great uh, Yale art gallery right. over there, and you have many sculpture, different uh, you know, uh, age and things, and you know, right. different materials and. You see great sculpture. For me, it's important to see great sculpture, and uh, and the artist in the United States has a great sculpture, great artist. You know, if you go, Daniel French, Daniel French. Yes. Yeah, I've been in studio in his studio two three times, and he has a great sculpture, and he inspired me, you know, to to do sculpture. It's a great sculpture. So we can safely say that you get your influence from everybody. I have influence for Michelangelo, etc., etc. Nice. You know, I have from my teachers, from my friends, from you, from you know. <laughs> I get inspiration and from one word who give me critical for my job, and uh, really I pre I appreciate where I talk with people and people give me suggestion, and I like to be and to talk with people. Right. Because if you talk with people for art or for anything, get inspiration. Right. Yeah. This that's is fantastic. the situation. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's where we come in. That's where the art talk comes in. But we thank you for coming today, and um, that'll wrap it up for uh, our today's edition of Art Talk. And The Valley Arts Council has just opened a new Main Street Gallery in downtown Ansonia. It's a place where art and artists have come together to bring you special one-of-a-kind gifts. Stop by for a visit to see our selection of handcrafted jewelry, pottery, photography, and paintings, all of which are created by local artists. Are you a painter, sculptor, photographer, or interested in the arts? Join us. For more information, visit us at thevalleyartscouncil.org or stop by our gallery on Main Street in downtown Ansonia.